pray that this word, O oh God and Gospel Prophet 25, will come to us in simplicity and with the clarity and the power of the Holy Spirit as we talk about the mystery revealed. Amen. And what is our knowledge in the mystery? Because Paul, you laid the foundation for us and you said we should build on it. And so we thank you that we're going to learn a lot. We give you praise and give you honor in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen, amen and amen and amen. amen. Karen, are we excited? Yes. Gospel Prophets 25. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sharon is saying something. Gospel Prophets 25. The mystery revealed. Hallelujah. Echama. How do you say revealed in Uganda? Hey, that's Kawan. I can't say it. Glory to God. I'm an idiot. Hallelujah. The mystery revealed. But at the end of the day, I want to ask you that question. What is your knowledge in the mystery? Because as you're going to read, Paul is going to say, this is my knowledge in the Mystery. So Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. I'm going to first read it for all of us, and then we can come back and go to it verse by verse. All right? Ephesians chapter 3. Are we all there? Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 to 7. Are we there? Can I read? Yes. Then we shall come back verse by verse. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you, Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which was given to me for you, how that by revelation, eh, by revelation, he made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. My what? knowledge that mind in the mystery of Christ which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it has now been revealed by the spirit to his holy apostles and prophets that the Gentiles here is, here is a thing a charmer, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through what? the gospel now you remember the your bread of life the inside as you remember Okay, verse 7. Of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. Now, we're going to go through those seven verses. Remember, gospel prophet is what? Verse by verse. But he's talking about the mystery revealed. Echama. <laughs> One of my members, before they were submitted to me, <laughs> They used to come at Gilgabi. Then I preached the mystery. Then the mystery is not revealed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then I said, I'm going to say, Mr. Christ, the middle of the world. I'm going to say, It was a mystery, but it was not revealed to her, to him, to them. You understand? This thing has got to be revealed. Mystery revealed. Hallelujah. And so we are going to go through that situation today. And we are going to enjoy. Because with this, from today with these sermons, I'm going to touch here and touch there and touch there and touch there. So you never know which part will be yours in that sermon. Somebody say, I'm ready to receive. I'm ready to receive. But let's go to the mystery. Let's first give, let me first give you the context. of, of And by the way, this is why I preach what I preach. Hallelujah. So let's go back somewhere in Romans 16, 25. There is something that Paul says about the mystery. Romans 16 from 25. By the way, you may not have to write because you can go back and listen. Because today I'm going to, this, this gospel prophet, I got scripture, scripture here, but you, may, but you can write. But it will be good for you to go back and listen to that. And follow as you study. Hallelujah. Amen. Just give me your ears. In Romans 16 20, from 25, it says, Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel. Eh, eh, Paul, first of all, is saying, This gospel that I preach, eh, is able to establish you. This thing that I preach can establish your business. This gospel that I preach can establish your family. This gospel that I preach is able to establish your finances. Paul is saying the answer is in the word. And the gospel. 
Hallelujah. This thing is able to establish you. I like what Paul says. Now the gospel, the Bible says, is the power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. Power of God unto healing. For you is believing God for healing. Power of God unto wealth. For you is broke. Power of God unto hope. For you is what? Hopeless. It's the power of God unto rest. Come you uh, la who labor and are able I'll give you what? Rest. This gospel, no wonder the Bible says, I mean, Paul, God says, I am what I am. Go and tell the Israelites that I am what I am. In other words, I can be whatever they want me to be in their life. Go tell a person who is broke that I am their provision. Go and tell that person who is sick that I am their healing. Are you understanding what I'm saying? That's what I am means. I am what I am. Um, now, whatever situation you are in, God is saying, I am. Because I can establish you by my gospel. You don't need the government. You don't need your husband. You don't need your pastor. Eh? Oh, pastor, does that mean that I should go and... You don't need your pastor. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Now, these things should be able to establish you by now. Hallelujah. So learn to welcome the gospel, not as the words of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which is able to establish you, to work effectively among those who believe. I shared that last Sunday because I felt in my spirit that we should learn to receive the word of God as it is in truth, the word of God. When God says you are rich, you have to receive it as it is the word. It is God who has said you are rich. Some of us get so crazy. When, when somebody comes and says, from today you are rich. Now, for you with your mind, like, ah, this is the president of Uganda. Now, what job is he giving you? Well, I am rich. Hallelujah. You go back home, man. Yes. The big man has said that I am rich. And I'm going to get, he's going to give me a job. Like, you look forward to the, because President Museveni has what? The owner of Uganda. But God says you are rich. Ah, whose report will you believe? Museveni's report? Or the? So he says, to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Paul is saying, for me, I preach Christ according to the revelation of the what? Of the mystery. A child I preach Christ according to what? That secret. I don't preach Christ according to demonology. Until you lost your job, there is some kind of demon there. I don't preach Christ according to the powers of Satan. But then there is something. You lost your job. Hey, what do you to say? I don't preach Christ according to a pearl zawaka. I don't preach Christ according to prosperity. So seed and God is going to bless you. <laughs> God is saying somebody with $1,000 sow a seed and God is going to bless you. Hallelujah. Like as though if, if I don't sow a seed, I won't be blessed. We don't preach the gospel that way. But I say, we, I preach it according to the revelation of the what? Mystery. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then it says, kept secret since the world began, but now made manifest. It has been funeraled. Hallelujah. Yeah. And by the prophetic scriptures, made known to all nations. This mystery has been made known to the world. Amen. But the world has not comprehended it. Am I making sense? Now, you look at every minister of the gospel standing in ministries and you ask yourself, are the pastors preaching Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery? When you go to those churches, are they preaching Christ according to the revelation of the what? That's why we want these gospel prophets today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The secret of God has been made known. For the Bible says he has made known to us his mysterious... Eh, he has made known to us his mysterious will. The mystery of his will. God has made known to us the mystery of his will. Hey, that it is in your spirit. That by what Christ has done, he has shown you his mysterious ways. That means that you know all things. Yeah. 
The Bible says we have an unction from on high, and we know all things. So Trisha knows her husband. Okay. I've got very far. Trisha knows her what? Husband. She walks as long as married. She can't They can't do much. She's what? Married. I'll be like, hey. You know how to reach out to the world and win souls. You know. You know how to make money. You know how to build a successful ministry. You know how to raise your children in the ways of the Lord. You know how to sustain and keep your wife. Hey! Salabaka! I know all things. Now, the problem is, you know, I say, hey, Pastor. The problem is, you know why you say you don't know? Why are you fighting with it? It is your natural man that is fighting. The natural man doesn't know. Your, 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 your soul doesn't know. That's why we want to let our spirit, our, our, our soul agree, our intellect agree with the spirit. Because the one that knows is what? Your spirit. Your spirit knows all things. That's why we should stop praying like, Hallelujah. But we know all things. When you're praying prayers, one who knows all things. Huh? Father, I thank you that I am the best in this business. Father, I thank you that I am successful. I thank you that I know how to make money. I know how to keep my wife. I know how to talk to her when she's running crazy. Masuri bake naki. Hi. Hi. Hallelujah. I know how to position myself. Pray as one who knows all things. When I'm praying for other ministries, I, I, I envision us in the field. Hey! Hey! <laughs> oh, this is your bread of life. Grace unto you, good people, all over the world. Hallelujah. I am communicating to the world because I know how to reach to the wow. world. Wow. Glory. Amen. If you guys think I'm talking to you, one, two, three, don't be deceived. I'm talking to the world. Eh? You, you help me wave to France. Hallelujah. So, he says that mystery. Now let's go to Colossians and but I haven't come to Ephesians yet. Eh? Let's go and see the mystery. Because it says, I preach Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the what? Mystery. So we want to see that mystery that Paul preaches, isn't it? Colossians chapter 1 from verses 24, he says, I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, of which I became a minister. I'm, I'm going to come back there, by the way. There is something deep there. Okay? Then verse 26, it says, The mystery which has been hidden. Romans, eh? which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed. Now, he's painting us a picture of Romans chapter 16, 25, right? That kind of mystery. Then it says in verse 27, To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, the outsiders. You remember? This is among the, the Gentiles, which is. Now, he's going to define for you that mystery. Yeah? Then it says, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So, the mystery that I'm talking about is Christ in you. Trisha, Christ is in you. How can you fail? For you to fail means that the one in you has failed. And then the Bible says, greater is he which is in you than he which is in the world. For you to struggle means that the one in you is struggling. For you to fail. Am I understanding this mystery? Do you guys understand this mystery? Do you know how deep that mystery is? That for me to fear, it means that the one in me. Because it is not you who lives. Who lives in you? Christ lives in you. So, if you fail, it means that Christ fails. That's why I refuse to fail. I refuse to struggle. I refuse to fall sick. Because the one in me does not fall sick. This is the mystery that was kept hidden of all ages, but now has been revealed that the one in you is the mystery. This is what Paul is preaching. Then he says in verse 28, Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man, in all wisdom. Hallelujah. 
That's why I have your bread of life. If you, if, if, if you have noticed my bread of life, I will go back to the mystery. Whether in finances, who you are, you understand what I'm saying? Because I have duty always. Then it says that we may present every man perfect in Christ. That word there is to maturity. To I present Susan mature in Christ. That when somebody comes to our ministries and they see Susan talking, they look at a person who is mature in Christ. Spiritual maturity is, is one thing basic. Christ, no more knowledge. Where Susan talks about Christ, Christ, Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. But you find Susan sitting and talking about gossip. I'm like, hmm? hallelujah. <laughs> so he says, to this end I also labor according to his working, which works in me. Do you know why I labor? That like every day when I'm preaching to Deborah and my seed and the Susan, I come to the end and say, Father, I thank you that they are complete in Christ. That's my prayer. No wonder we are making progress in the realm of the world. Spirit. Spirit. You can't have a pastor who is praying with that end in mind and you don't make it. Oh, come on, I have refused. Hallelujah. You are going to experience spiritual maturity from glory to glory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, so now we know the mystery. What has been revealed? Christ in you, the hope. This is Sharon's best summer. This is Sharon's best summer. Now, let's come back to Ephesians. Let's start with verse 1. He says, For this reason I, Paul, uh, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles. Now, let's first go there. Remember, it's chapter by chapter, verse by verse. There, there are some mysteries there that I don't want to miss. Paul is saying, For this reason, I became a prisoner of Christ for you. For you. You, you, who? Gentiles. Not Jews. Not Baganda. He says what? Gentiles. Why do I focus on the word Gentiles? Because Paul's field has been defined. Paul knows the people, the specific people that God has sent him to. Paul knows his assignment. He's not saying that I'm, God has sent me to the Jews. No, 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 no. God has sent me to the Gentiles. This is my field. This is my assignment. I know it. I'm not going to go and preach the gospel in the synagogues. No wonder when he preached to the synagogues, what happened? They kicked him. Every time he went to the Jews, what did they do? They kicked him. Because God didn't send him to the Jews. That wasn't his field. His field was the Gentile world. And no wonder everywhere he went to the Gentile world, they received him. Why? The grace was there. That was his assignment. It is important you define your field. It is important you understand your assignment. What is an evangelist doing in the prophetic ministry? Huh? Hallelujah. What is an apostle doing in the teaching ministry? But God has sent you to Morocco. What are you doing in California? God. Is a good God. No, wait a minute. That language is not for California. It's supposed to be for the guys in what? Morocco. God has sent you to Nagapiri, Piri, Thea. But said, no, we are going to. Uh, God has come to plant a church in Miami. Wait, wait a minute. Is it the last that is taken to Miami or Papas? You realize it is a man. God has sent you to Kampala. Ay, 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 ay. Maybe I am coming, by the way. Some of you are planted in a wrong... I'm not saying us here, because this, I'm, I'm preaching to the whole world, right? Yeah. Some of us are planted in a wrong church. Hey. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. You're planted in a wrong what? Church. Allow God to define the church you are to be planted, because the Bible says, they that are planted in the house shall flourish, right? So, if you're, by the way, if you're not flourishing in other ministries, then that's a sign that you're not planted in this church. You're in a room field. Hallelujah. If Pastor Adrian doesn't command a voice over your life, you're in a room field. You go look for where God has planted you. You might be like a pity pity. God will give you the grace. Hallelujah. Am I really making sense? That's why sometimes I remember I close the church and I say, first go and think about your submission. And pray to God about it. Now, let's go back to Paul. He talks about the Gentiles. I'm, I'm defining for us our field. Because some of you, you need to understand this. And I'm going to come back to it. 
So Paul talking about the Gentiles in Galatians chapter 2 from verse 6. I said, just listen to me, right? You go back and listen to someone again. Now you have a whole week. Eh? He says, but from those who seem to be something, whatever the way, it makes no difference to me. God shows personal favoritism to no man. For those who seem to be something added nothing to me. But on the contrary, when they saw that the gospel for the uncircumcised, the Gentiles, had been committed to me. Even the Peter saw that it was committed to who? To him. As Peter, I mean, as the gospel for the circumcised, the Jews, was committed to what? To Peter. Okay? Very simple. Then he says, For he who worked effectively in Peter for the apostleship to the circumcised also worked effectively in me towards the Gentiles. When God sends you to those people, he will work effectively in their lives. That's why when I speak over your life and I say that you are running in the realm of the Spirit, I know it is true because it's submitted to me and it is going to work in your life. He works effectively to where you are set. He works effectively in that field where God has sent you. What are you doing in choir when God hasn't called you there? Am I really making sense? Now, this is why it is important. You're what? Assigned. Don't run. Maybe we are not. Maybe you're not effective. Listen to me. Because you're in the wrong field. That field could be a relationship. Huh? That field could be the community where you are. That field could be your nation. It could be marriage. And it's not working because you're, in a, you're, with, you're with the wrong man. Hey. Hey. It's not working effectively because you're with the wrong woman. That's very bad. How many of us have entered into this thing? Now that's not that. And you've tried, you've tried this business and you're in the wrong business. You didn't define your field. Am I really making sense? Now, sometimes it's not the demon. Sometimes it's not the curse. I don't care if they take you to the prophet to see in the spirit. I don't care how many times you're going to go for deliverance. Brother, this is deliverance. Sir. Amen. Okay, this is, no, this is deliverance because this delivers you and you go back and you align yourself. I don't have to cast the spirit away. But if a spirit manifests here, we shall cast it out. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother, we shall cast it out. When I preach the word, teach guys, uh, those spirits are not. Brother, you should, you should know that the word of God does that. So, you could be in a room. You could be struggling because you're in a wrong field. Am I really making sense? But he says in again verse 9, he says, And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that had been given to me, see, people will perceive that grace has been given to you for that ministry. But when you sing, they can perceive the grace that as you are singing, you heal the sick. One of, one of the things I believe for my choir is that they sing, people will... Receive their healing as they see. Receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I see. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? That as I preach, I am dealing on the emotional healing. Hallelujah. Because even healing is dimensional. You can heal, you can heal somebody of cancer. Hallelujah. But again, there are, there are thoughts and things that people are fighting with. And Pastor Ray says, my sermons will heal them emotionally. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Because I know it is working effectively. Okay? Ah, do you have the grace for the thing that they've called you into? Okay? Very important. Now he's saying, God gave me, God gave me this thing so that I could help you Gentiles. You were the so-called outsiders. So verse 1 is very important. That you must understand and define your field. Verse 2, he says, If indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for you. He says that dispensation. Hallelujah. Somebody say dispensation. dispensation. Hallelujah. Dispensation. The Greek, the Greek, the original Greek says the administration. Another version says the stewardship of the grace. Another version says the management of the 
grace. Now, when I was reading Colossians 1.25, you remember I said that of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God. Now, listen, we are in the dispensation of grace. We are in the period of grace. Now, let me, let me first go eschatological and show you because after Ephesians, I might do, I might do, I might do revelation. Let me show you something. We must, okay, so we must understand your period. That God deals with us according to the period that he has given us, the prophetic. Yeah? God deals with us according to that dispensation. Now, before this grace, there was a dispensation of the law. Yeah? The Old Testament. Mm. Hallelujah. Ah, I have my 50,000. I think it is in the bank. Many of you think that Matthew is in the Old Testament. I mean, he's in the New Testament. Many of you think, yes, I'm very sure. That's why if I had to tell you, you would have all failed. Where does the New Testament begin? Matthew, no. Jesus was in the Old Testament. The disciples were in the Old Testament. What we read in Matthew, in Luke, in Mark, in John, that is the old. They didn't know. Hey! Shut up, I can't tell you guys. I knew it. Now, yeah, hold on. That's why you submitted to me. Now, the Bible says that there has to be the death of the testator for a testament, right? So, the Old Testament moved until Jesus died. After the resurrection, the New Testament ushered what? In. Am I making sense? Read your scriptures. So the New Testament began after the death of who? Of Christ. Many of you thought it was in Mark. No. What we are reading about those guys in the Old Testament. I mean in the Old Testament. Hey. That's why when the New Testament came, they received the power of the Holy Ghost. Am I making sense? So when you read the Peters, understand in what dimension were they seeing? In the Old Testament or in the New Testament? Hallelujah. Hey, 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 hey. Now, after Jesus, we enter into the dispensation of grace. Yeah? You can call them, that means before God was dealing with those people according to the law. Do this and I love you. Do this and I love you, right? That works. Now, we're in a period of grace. Grace is going to end with the rapture of the church. When we are caught up in the sky, right? That's the next prophetic what? Event, okay? The rapture. As we're here, poof! Hallelujah. Then those will be left behind. We enter into another period called the Great Tribulation, where the Antichrist, Satan himself in the flesh, will be coming to rule the world. For seven years. Three and a half years is going to be peace. Three and a half years is going to be chaos. In that, Satan will be killing Christians and the Jews. At the same time, God will be killing. Right? Mark my words. God will be killing those with the mark of the beast. Now imagine God is killing. And Satan is what? Okay. Great tribulation. Seven years. Hallelujah. I remember sometimes I was telling him that the, uh, the rock, uh, the temple has not been building. In God, he, gave up, he, was, he was complaining with me. No, 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 no. He doesn't remember. And I'm like, oh, no, he doesn't know the place from where I'm speaking from. Because the temple is being built. That means we are coming. Jesus is coming. The Antichrist is, <laughs> is soon coming. Now, that's another period, right? What? After that, then Jesus Christ is going to come back with Pastor Adrian and the Sharons. <laughs> And everyone, like a butter. Everyone! For me, I want France. And we are going to reign for 1,000 years. The millennium reign of Christ. The one the Jews call the Davidic kingdom. The one they asked him in Acts chapter 1. Are you going to right now restore unto us the what? The kingdom. That's the Davidic kingdom. 1,000 years. And in that millennium kingdom, we are spiritual and we are ruling over the physical People. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And it's not a period of grace, by the way. It is a period of iron. You sin, kaka, you die immediately. You sin, kaka, you die. But here you sin and the grace of God is upon you. But there you sin, everyone is like, because Satan, 
in the millennium kingdom, I forgot, in the millennium kingdom, as Jesus is coming, Satan is bound for 1,000 years, he's locked, so he can't work. The Antichrist and the false prophets are going to be cast into the lake of fire. Eh? That means that those who are dead right now have not yet been cast into the lake of fire. They are in like a small hell waiting for a big hell. Are you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So, after 1,000 years, Satan is going to be released because everyone has to be deceived. I mean, has to be tested. Are they going to take Christ or Satan? And the Bible says he is going to lure very many and they're going to fight with us they call it the battle of the Armageddon. You understand what I'm saying? Now, after that, we enter into the white throne judgment, where the dead will rise. Those who have died in Adam, those who have died in Moses, those who are dying in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, after this, they are going to rise. And even those in the Millennium Kingdom. Now, imagine you're dying, you're getting out of this small hell, because the Bible says, and hell shall give up. So you move from this hell, and then you go and meet Satan. He has been there waiting for you. I mean, the, the false prophets. I don't know what I'm saying. You get me? That is where the hell, the real, the real hell with the capital. Read your Bible. There's a hell, a small hell, and a big hell, right? White throne judgment. After the white throne judgment, then we enter into what we call the new heaven and the new earth. Hallelujah. So, we have the law. We have the grace, we have the rapture, we have the seven-year great tribulation, millennium kingdom, white throne judgment, and then we have the new heaven and the new earth. But the one that we are in right now is called the dispensation of grace, where God deals with you on the basis of grace. Amen. Do you know what that means? I thank God that he didn't put me in the period of the millennium kingdom. I would die. God said, ha, Pastor, you don't go. Now, so, but I'm going to go. I'm going to go. With your weakness. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Hey! God deals with me on the basis of grace. God, don't look at me. Even you're just like me. Come on. God is dealing with me the best. Hey, I'm going to go. I'm dealing with you by the basis of what? Grace. I'm going to be like, hey, man, Pastor Adrian. Ah, even you. Hallelujah. So, we are in the period of what? Grace. No wonder Paul says in Romans eleven twenty five, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conscience, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be coming. Paul is saying, the Jews have rejected Jesus Christ for a reason. God has blinded them for a reason because God wanted to usher in the Gentiles. God wanted to change from the law, the Jews, to the Gentiles. But he needed grace, so he blinded them from seeing the gospel. Now, many of us are, are blaming the Jews for not accepting Jesus Christ, but if they accepted Jesus Christ, there would not be grace for the Gentiles. So I thank God that they were blinded up to now. They are still blind up to now. They don't see the Messiah. And because of that, God is making them jealous by grafting who? It's like Sharon wants to make plants jealous. He goes and gets that man, we bring it around. She starts doing those things to invoke her je his jealousy. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Neither, he, he, he doesn't want this man. He wants planet, but he wants to provoke the jealousy in him so that he can come to her. You understand what I'm saying? So God is, God is saying, let me provoke these Jews because I love them very much. Let me usher in my Messiah and to deal with the Gentiles to provoke the Jews to what? Jealousy. Hey. No, for you to think, but I give. No, God, God is using you as the bait. Eh? <coughs> now, the Bible says, He came to His own, and His own did not receive Him. But they that believed in Him, He gave them the right to become the children of what? God. His own didn't. So God is saying, Let me use the Gentiles to just provoke these guys. So when they see me, when they see these guys loving on the Messiah, they will get jealous. And they say, They say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why he says in verse 26, and so all Israel shall be saved. Yeah. Am I, am I preaching well? Yeah. So we are in the dispensation of what? Grace. And Paul is saying, God has given me the special responsibility to extend his grace towards you, Gentiles. So we are in the period of this church. Listen, God deals, you, deals with you on the merit of grace. By the way, it's also called the period of the church. 
Hallelujah. That's why it is the what? The church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that is something that I want to bring before I go to the next point. Amen? Are you doing, are you doing the summer? Yes. That means that the principle that I love, we are saved. No, God deals with us on this principle. Please get it. Grace through faith. Hallelujah. Grace through faith. You are saved by grace through faith. You are healed by grace through faith. If you want to get married, how do you marry? By grace through faith. Hey! You want to build that house? Hey, it is by grace through faith. Do you want to raise your children in the fear of God? Listen, it is by grace through faith. Do you want to succeed in that job as the CEO? It is by grace through faith. Do you want to build a successful ministry and career in life? Yes, it is by grace through faith. Am I making sense? Everything is by grace through faith. You are healed by grace through faith. You are loved by grace through faith. You are established in this gospel by grace through faith. That's why Romans 4, 16, I love it. It is of faith that it might be according to grace so that the promise might be sure. What's that promise? You're the head and not the tail. Yeah. You are above only not belief. All the promises of God are yes and are many in Christ Jesus. But it all starts with what? Faith. faith. It's of faith. You, can, you build your car by faith. You raise your children by faith. You love your people by faith. You build a ministry by faith. That's why I say I am the pastor for the world. I'm speaking from the place of faith. Because everything begins with faith. You've got to believe. Amen. That you are successful. You've got to believe that you are fruitful. You've got to believe that this womb spiritual. God can't give you the spiritual womb for you not to give birth to the dream that is inside you. But it is by faith. It is of faith. So is your marriage of faith? Is your ministry of faith? You will sitting on this chair. That is faith. Who told you to trust you? Just come to the fact. But why do you see the comfort of faith? How come we can't believe God for healing? You understand? Everything starts with faith. We live by faith. When you go to bed, you're sure you're going to wake up in the morning. Is that yeah. faith? Like this. We must understand this thing. If you can use that, why can't you use the faith of God to know that you are the head and not a tail? You are above only and not beneath. Everything begins with faith. Amen. It's a life of faith that just shall live by faith. That it might be according to grace. So that you will know that it wasn't you. It was God. You gave birth to this child. It was of faith that it might be according to grace that the promise may be sure. Am I, I preaching? Can your marriage fail? What do you need? Where do you start from? Faith. <laughs> My husband, wait a minute. Faith. Shut up! Faith. But, but shut up! Faith. Faith. Because we are in the dispensation of grace. So everything must be of faith. I wish you understand what I've just said. If we are in the dispensation of grace, then everything has to be of faith. I can't do a hover without faith, it will die. Glory to God. Am I preaching well? Hallelujah. So God is gathering the Jews and the Gentiles in, in this dispensation oh, in Christ by faith. Hallelujah. Oh, Mary Bakuta. So Paul, I'll come to the place where I want. Now, Paul informs them of God's appointing him to the office, right? Okay? And eminently fitting and qualifying him for it by what? By a special revelation. Hey, now, guys, don't miss this one because I want to focus on the what? God, he tells them of his office and how he was qualified by a special revelation that God made known unto him. I preach the mystery according, I mean, I, I preach Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Of this I became what? 
a minister. Paul is saying that this thing I have been assigned to you because of the revelation. That means you are assigned. Listen to me. You are assigned according to the revelation you know of God. You'll get it. You'll get it. You are assigned according to the revelation you know of God. You are sent according to the revelation that you know. God can't send you without an, an, the understanding of who he is. You're going to preach about this God whom you do not know. You're going to, whom are you going to tell this Christ who has been revealed, who has been revealed to you? Now, many people are running! Without the revelation. God assigns according to the revelation you know. So if you know one person, <laughs> all you need to do is have the revelation and God will give you all the people that you want. Gentiles, the Bible says, shall come to my light. That's revelation. Hallelujah. I know people who are going to start coming for your bread of life because of the light that I have, the revelation. Now, if you're not assigned, <laughs> that's the reason. Revelation. The Bible says many are called, but the few are chosen. The many that are called are gifted, but the few that are chosen are assigned. So if you want to be a man, the many, just, just live your life. They come to church, blah, blah, blah. But if you want to be chosen, if you want to be assigned, revelation of God. And you're going to waste time gossiping? You're going to waste time defending your innocence? Somebody called me in my neighborhood in Zababa. That pastor is one stealing girls. I know that's the enemy. Now, I go and tell everybody, I'm going to say no, I just go in my room. Father, I thank you for the revelation. That's what I want because I'm after the assignment of God. Now, every one of you has a specific assignment on earth, but the problem is that you're not giving yourself and yielding to the spirit of revelation that comes through the word of God. And a lack of revelation will hinder you from seeing the need of reaching out even through your bread of life. What is that thing lacking that doesn't give you the mandate to start your bread of life at some point? What hasn't been revealed? That's what I was asking. Chichencho, what has not been revealed in that system? How come somebody is doing the 20 and somebody is doing the 5, but for you, know, what has not... What? Hey, Karamenta, so the Kenya. Am I really making sense? So before you, before you want to know your assignment and the purpose, Grow in the revelation of God. Don't be quick to start. Let them go. Hallelujah. You'll come running. I was in a, I was in a dream and I was running up. To, I was running. I found some guys joke, but I was just passing them. This guys what I don't mean. There are guys, I told you last week, right? The guys who have gone, but, but let them what? Go. But when God sends you, when God says it's time for you to shoot, you will shoot and pass them. Receive that prophetic in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't mind about them. Don't mind about somebody who has gone ahead of you. Banagi, for me, they got married before me, they got a child. Shall has a child before me. Banagi, Susan. No, no. Let's shall have her. Okay. Get yours. Hey, Karali, Bartos. I'm not comparing, okay? So, am I making sense? That you are assigned. The question is if you're not assigned, have you known why? God assigns according to revelation. So he speaks of the dispensation of this grace given to him as was authorized and commissioned by God to dispense, to give the doctrine of what? Grace. Because with the Moses, they were in the dispensation of the what? Law. And Moses received it for the generation and the dispensation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says. Moses came by what? I mean, uh, is it the law, right? But what does it say? Moses was given the law, and grace came by what? 
by Jesus Christ, right? It is in John chapter 1. So, there had to be a new doctrine. This dispensation had the law. There had to be another doctrine. The doctrine of what? Grace. And it was very important that it was given to Paul. Okay? So, with the, with the new dispensation comes the new doctrine. That's why I said in the millennium kingdom, for the 1,000 year realm, Christ, where the Bible says he's going to rule by an iron. An iron rod. Eh? That's the word. An iron. That is Jesus Christ. He's ruling by a sword. <laughs> Pastor calls you. Uh, Susan Oliwa. Never surely you're in the bar. Ha, Musumba. I am praying in church. Are you saying that? You just die immediately. <laughs> hey! <laughs> ah, God said, no. I'm not in that dinner. Why is that a fun dog? That's in a fun dog. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> but I'm a work in progress. Hallelujah. No, in now, in this new dispensation, it is important we understand that it's a doctrine of grace. Because that's the word for the dispensation. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, Paul says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ. God has called you in the grace. Hallelujah. Does that mean I should go and sing? No. But God has called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. Meaning the gospel of Christ is the gospel of his grace. Here's the difference between law and grace. Let me help you understand. The law... Those who preach the law, they focus on what man should do. Wake up at 3 a.m., midnight hour. Wait a minute. If it's midnight Uganda, what time is it in England? 10. So which gate are you talking about? Because if it is midnight in England, yeah, it is 2 in Uganda. Am I making sense? So when you say the midnight hour, oh you get a bitchy. Eya Uganda? Eya England? Help me understand. Some of us, our gate can be 10 a.m., it can be 5 a.m., it can be 1 p.m. But the law focuses on what man should do. Pray and fast for 40 days, and God will bless you. That's the guy will go to the prayer room, I mean to the to the to, to, to the wilderness and they pray. Then they come back and talk about how they prayed, how they fought with. So, every time you hear um, a message that points on what you should do, do this, sow a seed of $1,000 and receive a blessing. Hallelujah. Yes. Do this and God will love you. Some people even say that because they didn't go to ministry, God disciplined them so very bad. Are you hearing me? Have you heard this message that somebody says and say? God, God called me to ministry. Nay, I didn't go. And God sent a sickness. God struck me with sickness because I disobeyed. So there's, are you seeing what I'm saying? Yeah. But many people think God is like that. Are you hearing me? God cannot do that. Otherwise, God would have killed Jonah. Why did he send the fish? Why? Are you hearing me? So, hey, stop seeing God as one who is that bad. Okay? So, the Lord says, do this, and you will be blessed. The man in his state, so that God can bless you. The grace says, no, no, no. God has initiated you man respond by what? By grace through faith. No, God has already blessed you. Do you believe it? God has already healed you. Do you believe it? The law are outside and trying to get in. Those of the grace are inside as enjoying and partaking of everything that God has given them. So I don't do to get in. I'm already in. Yeah. I don't love. My husband. I, mean, I don't cook food for my husband. For him to love me. That means I am on the outside. Because if I do that, the moment I burn that water. Hey! But 
I cook because I'm already loved. Because I am in. Hallelujah. Shut up, okay. So, you understand that? So it was important God ushers in the gospel of grace and says, no, it's not about what you do. It is about what Jesus has done. So grace defines me. I am not defined by what I do. Yeah. You say, I'm a doctor because I study. No, that doesn't define me. I'm a child of God because I pray. I am a prayer warrior. I am this. No, no, no. I am defined by what Christ has done. Define me from the work of Christ. Look at him from the finished work of Christ. When God looks at you, he doesn't look at your prayer life. Eh? He looks at what Christ has done. Now, this can save us a lot of things in life. That I don't have to pray to be healed. I'm there. I'm just simply going to commune with God. It, it, it changes prayer as a duty. And you begin to love it and be like, Am I making sense? So when he says, but even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be a cast. <laughs> Everyone that is preaching, for example, the law, I don't want to be cast. <laughs> I don't want to be what? How about those that are seated under the message that is not of grace. Hey, you are seated under the man who is not preaching this. Psalms 1, verses 1. Do we read it? You guys know it, right? How does it go? Blessed is the what? Who does not what? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Uh huh. Scholars, where are you? Uh huh. Blessed is the man who does not sit in the seat of what? Scorners. Do you know that you can sit under the word that is not of grace and you're sitting in the scorner? You're seated listening to the law. Psalms 1, verses 1. Glory! I. No wonder Paul says in Acts 20, 24, but none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself so that I may finish my rest with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus Christ to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. The ministry which I received. What was that ministry? To testify to the gospel of the grace of God. That was his ministry. In this dispensation, the one who was called as the master builder of the church, the one who laid the foundation. Paul is saying you cannot go any deeper. I have gone deep, but you can build on. I will not come back there. Hallelujah. So it's the gospel of the grace of God. That means what God calls men to, he fits them, right? Yeah. And he does it by the almighty power. When he calls you, he fits you into it. Glory. So God will never ask you to do something that he has not equipped you for. Listen to me. God can't ask you to do something that he has not equipped you for. He can't ask you to win souls if he hasn't equipped you for it. God can't ask you to be rich if he didn't equip you to be rich. Hey! He can't ask you to do something that he hasn't equipped you what? For. So he has equipped us with one thing in life that I believe that we all need. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, all scripture, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete. That is you. That the man of God, that child of God may be complete in everything through, I mean, thoroughly equipped for every good work. That he has given you the word to be equipped for marriage. All you need for a good marriage is the scripture. I've given you the scripture to teach you, to rebuke you, that you may be thoroughly equipped for marriage. <laughs> Hallelujah. That you may be thoroughly equipped for raising that child in the way of God. So he has equipped us all. He has equipped us for all in our different calls. For the word, I mean with the word. Hallelujah. Just know somebody say God has equipped me for marriage. I mean with a word to build a successful marriage. 
If it's failing, come back and say, Father, I... That's what I told you. There's a way we need to start praying. Father, I thank you that you've equipped me with the word to be, to, 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 to be thoroughly equipped and have a successful what? Marriage. The man comes, cheats on you, you come back. Father, all scripture has been given to me for inspiration. The man is not doing things are not working, come back. Do you know what it means for you to find out that your husband has cheated on you? Then you wake up in the morning to pray. Because the Father is saying that all scripture has been given to me. <laughs> that I may be thoroughly equipped for my good marriage. Do you know what that means? Bye for you. Bye for you. Susan. Let me call you. That's that's somebody who's like. Am I am I communicating? Am I? <laughs> communicating am I communicating so as God appointed him to the office he immediately qualified him for it by a special revelation that he made known to him so he makes mention both of the mystery that was revealed and the revelation of it the mystery then the revelation and that's where I'm going to come the mystery is Christ in you the hope of glory but again there's a revelation to that Are you understand what I'm saying there is something deeper than that. But in that, he explains in our service, I know, uh, that he, explains, he explains that great truth. That this, the apostles, he gave them and told them that the, Gentiles would, that the Gentiles would be called to salvation by the faith of Christ, not the law. Remember, they were fighting with the law. When these guys began receiving the gospel, the Gentiles, Peter was amazed. A certain group of people came to, came to the, the Gentiles and said, No, 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 no. You cannot be saved if you're not circumcised. Now, they were just back to the doctrine of the law, the dispensation. No, you cannot be saved unless you are circumcised. But that was for the Jews. You cannot be saved until you are married. <laughs> you cannot be saved until you are what? Mary. Hallelujah. You can't be saved until you do some good works. This is what is happening in the church today. You're putting one at, at, at trust in the church. Woman of God. Are you saved? I don't know what I'm saying. So this thing had crept in and God then Paul had to defend that gospel and, 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 and I want to go. So they, they come to Jerusalem in that council to discuss this matter and they ask themselves, do, do the Gentiles need to be circumcised in order for them to be saved. So they get a whole council and they begin to talk. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 15 from verse 6, Now the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter. Okay? And when there had been much dispute, Peter rose up and said to the men and brethren, You know what a good while ago God chose among us, that by my, that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Not and work. Then he says, so God who knows the heart acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit. God acknowledged the heart. God looks at your heart. Hey, hey, God looks at what? Your heart. What is my heart when I'm teaching? God looks at it and says, mm. although I speak, somebody says, Omotima. <laughs> If you had to speak, you will see God. If you're not seeing God, keep your heart. When God puts you that pajero, looking at your heart, when you're asking for that man, Looking at your heart. When you're asking for the world, looking at your heart. So the problem is not really the money and everything. Check your heart. And I'm going to come back there. So some of us, what we have is the sum total of our hearts. You are as rich as the state of your heart. You are influential as the state of your heart. Because God acknowledges the heart. 
you are enjoying God and experiencing the revelations of God. Ask the state of you. God speaks to you and reveals stuff to you because he has seen your heart. And says, no, my God, I have found David, the man after my own heart. David! You're going to shepherd his right. Susan, I have seen you, Mark. The state of your heart. What is the state of your heart? That could be another reason as why you're not getting what you're getting from God. So it says, but I, I, I skipped away because it, it was very important. It was not in my notes. Eh? Where was I? By giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us, and made no distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Oh my God. Hey, hey, hey. That God purifies your heart by faith. You don't have to pray for your heart to be purified. You don't have to give. Just believe. Faith purifies your heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And I can, I can bring it to us. Say, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God in their marriage. They shall see God in their finances. But what? It is faith. So, this gentiles are talking about, no, it is faith. Because God has purified them. Am I making sense? Then he says, now therefore, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner. We believe. That through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are saved, them and us. So it is a gospel, it is salvation by what? By grace. Can you go quickly? Are we enjoying it? Yes. Verse 3 and verse 4 it says, How that by revelation he made known to me the mystery as I have briefly written, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge and the mystery of. Christ. So Paul is opening a door and saying, this was my knowledge. But what is your knowledge? And you can't get And you know, Paul I've laid the foundation What is your knowledge in Christ in you the hope of glory? What is your knowledge? The mystery revealed. This is my knowledge. But you also have your own just go, just dig deeper. You'll get a revelation like me about this Christ in me because there is room for all of us to fit in, in this dispensation. Amen. That is what separates you from the rest. That is what makes, puts a distinctive mark upon you. That's what makes me deep when I go somewhere for the very first time. I'll preach my understanding, which I'm going to share with you. Anyway, whether you call me to the president, whether you call me to the poor in Morocco, I tell you one thing, I can, I can preach my sermon and, and who? And Muslim uh, will clap his arms. Because I have an understanding, my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. If you get that and you're a worshiper, my God. If you get that and you're a businessman, my God. If you get that and you're a husband, my God. If you get that and you're a parent, my God. This is my understanding. You have your own understanding. Am I really making sense? That's why he says, for me, he says it was revealed to me. That I told you, he can't assign you until you have a certain revelation. God can't do that. God, God can't send you to. Uh, no, he can't. They ask you who is Christ in the tongue of my he says in Galatians 1 verses 11 but I make known to you brethren that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man for I neither received it from man nor was I taught by it it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ this gospel came by what? revelation some things cannot be called I mean cannot be told they are just revealed you find me keep on saying God is not searched God is revealed I know what I'm talking about the gospel is not an assumption. The gospel is a revelation. Marriage is not an assumption. Marriage is a revelation. Yes, you want to get married, but you, I, you do understand a wife. A wife is not just a woman. A, a, anyone can be a woman. Hey, but a wife is that hidden man and that hidden person of the heart. That is who a woman is. She's quieted before her husband. Her husband speaks once. She's, yes. You want to get married immediately. No one is struggling in your relationships. 
Because when you're not with a wife, a husband, you understand you. Guys, let's get real. The gospel is not an assumption. The call of God is not an assumption. It is a revelation. Moses assumed it the very first 40 years. And what happened? He took off. When God came and found him in the wilderness, God revealed to him the call. And he came back facing the very person who was running from it. It's not where you run. It's what you run for. So when he got revelation, he was going to face not only the, uh, the Pharaoh, but the army. Somebody took away, ran, was running away from Pharaoh, but now he's coming back to face the army, except that there was something that was given him. Revelation. You, you fear to reach out to a soul? No, no, wait a minute. It's not an assumption. But the day he puts that thing in you, the day he gives a revelation, is the, is the word revealed. So, here's my prayer. Pray for you to have your part. That Father, open my eyes to the understanding of my knowledge in this mystery. Paul is saying, I've laid it. Build on it. The guys were in the prayer mountain. The guys were fasting for years. The guys were fasting for weeks. Father, husband, 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 marriage, Joseph, 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 tomorrow, Joseph, 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 marriage, car, car, Joseph, 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 hey, Salaba, Joseph, ah, and they're praying for things money can buy. I told myself, I'm never going to waste time praying for things money can buy. I pray according to what has been revealed to me. I don't understand what I'm saying. But you're praying for Joseph, Joseph, Julius, 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 Julius. That some of us are in the prayer mountain. Praying for the revelation of my understanding in the mystery. We are going to be different. I wasted time praying for things money can buy. And I realized they don't come. God was like, wait, don't on this and I thank God. I, for the first time, I realized God. I thank God He didn't give me those things, because it was transactional. They were my. Hmm? They were bigger than divine purpose. But now I know. Okay. So you're praying for a man instead of praying for. What are you praying for? What are your prayer requests? When you pray for one hour and you're requesting, what are you requesting for? Hey. No wonder you can't win souls. No wonder you're still scared. Because you're still consumed with what the eyes can see. You, you've not allowed the word of God to kill you because it's a sword, right? As the word, of, as the word killed you at the altar, because the altar do I eat from? When you're reading the Bible at the altar, does it kill you? Or you do a life to see? You read the word to interpret it. The Bible says, no, let's move from the word. No, I don't read the Bible to interpret it. The, I read the Bible for it to interpret me. That's the one must be. God, I read for the Bible to open me. The eyes of the open. No wonder I thank God. I knew it the day I was praying in tongues in the vision and my eyes opened. Poof! I knew that God has opened his word to me. And when I just sit, I see it. I see my knowledge in the revelation of the mystery, the insight. God begins to teach you yourself. Am I really making sense? So don't go to the word for a husband. Go for the word to study and be taught. Glory to God. Am I really making sense? That's what verse 5 it says, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it, as it has now been, as it has not been revealed by the Spirit. Hey, guys, it has been revealed by the what? The Spirit. Very important. It has been revealed by the what? The Spirit. And that same Spirit, Sharon, is in you. To reveal to you the very things that were taught, taught by Paul. To reveal to you your knowledge, your part in the mystery. The same thing that was revealed to Paul. The same Spirit is in you. To carry on the progressive work of God. To carry on the redemptive work of God. And this it does by revelation because revelations vary and progress according to the dispensations. That means we all have a certain revelation for this dispensation. But unless you connect to the revelation of this dispensation, you will not, you will live a normal life. 
If you only connect to the revelation of the Old Testament, you go. But some of us, we want the revelation of this dispensation. That's why 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verses 9, the Bible says, But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Wait. God, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Do you love him, Susan? Then there are things that God has prepared for you. And the Bible says, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. Wait a minute. He has already prepared. He has already given it to you. All things are yours. He has already revealed by his spirit. All you need to do is connect to the spirit of revelation and have them revealed to you. you can you be broke? Can you be poor? So all you need to tap into this is what? The spirit of of revelation. It's not the man you need. Man, man. It's not the job that you need. It's the revelation that you need that will give you that job. Are you hearing me? So, man, uh, Julius, Julius. No, 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 no. Revelation of marriage and that will bring you Julius. Oh, am I preaching? Yes. That's why some of us, we don't ask for man. We don't ask for job. I'm not saying don't go and work. Because somebody can get me wrong, by the way. Man, the world is wicked. Is that a pastor? No, no, no. When you're going to pray, okay, listen to me. What is what should be your prayer request? Let's learn. Let's learn. Let's learn the prayer. I, and, and I share that in I share that in Ephesians. I think uh, uh, Gospel Prophet, I think, I think 21 or 22, but none of you had it. I was like, I'm missing out. Paul didn't pray for the church to get jobs, visas, what? No, 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 no. You guys go to the men of God to do what? To prophesy for your visa. Come to Pastor Aaron and sit under the water and give me three years and we'll see. And I'll book you. Glory. But I've, I've, some of you have given me three years. Glory. I know what I'm talking about. By the way, I know I'm, I'm not convincing myself. I know. I am past the place of hoping. I? No. When Paul was praying for the church, he said in Ephesians 1.17, this is my prayer, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Hey, that was his prayer. Now, why don't you start praying like this? God, give me the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ because grace is brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Church, let's wake up and stop being babies and no more. Then it says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Boop. Oh, the eyes of your heart flooded with light that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and the exceeding greatness of his power. Wait a minute. That when your eyes are open, you will know the hope of his calling, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You will know the glorious inheritance, any seeker, isn't it? And you'll know the exceeding greatness of his power. You'll experience the power of God. What else do you need? Hallelujah. What else do you need? Do you need a job? No. The power that I'm going to experience will command that job to come. The power that I'm experiencing will command that man to come. So I don't need to pray for man, man. I need my eyes to be open, get the revelation, and then I will know. Ah! Somebody clap for that to Jesus Christ. So it was not so fully and clearly discovered in the ages before Christ. I'm coming to you as it is now revealed unto the prophets of this age. You're the prophet. Unto the ministers of this New Testament. You're the ones who are immediately inspired and taught by the Holy Spirit. We are taught by the Holy Spirit. We are sufficient ministers of this new covenant. Hallelujah. We have this ministry, which is the ministry of the, of the Spirit. Hallelujah. So let's go back and observe. Paul is saying the conversion of the Gentiles' world to the faith by this Christ. It was an adorable mystery. It was something that was hidden and they saw it and like, the Jews were like, wow. Because they, also, they were insiders, they thought it was from them only. They couldn't meet with the Gentiles. They were amazed that the outsiders also were given the same thing. It was a mystery. It was a mystery. It was a mystery. Some of they didn't think that God could serve a Gentile because they were dogs. Now, some of you, this should teach you a lesson. Don't give up on that person, that worst, that wicked, that you, God can save anyone. Can I prophesy? Can I prophesy? Can I really prophesy? Yes. 
you are in a situation and you think God can't get you out of it. You are uncertain about the future because you think God can't get you out of it. But let me tell you something. There is nothing that is too hard for divine grace to do in your life. May God reveal that to you and get you come out of it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing. If God can save the worst of sinners, how about the situation in your life that seems to be high? How about the future that you don't see? There is nothing that is too hard for divine grace to do in your life. And that is going to be is going to align you and get you out of that situation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm coming back there. Hallelujah. Amen. So, verse 6, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. We read that. And in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11, I say it, Therefore, remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in this world. The Gentiles had no Christ. They had no hope. They had no God. But it says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. A, A. That's why I still want to prophesy. You went through hell. Things have been tight in your life. And I'm speaking to you. Your situation seems to be like Bananga. For me, God can get me out of this. It is tight. Hey, but by the grace of God, my prayer that may God turn your mess into the message of grace. That's my prayer. And that's what I was praying for. May God turn it into the message of grace. Listen to me. Your situation is becoming history. Your past is becoming history. I prophesy your past is becoming history. Your financial state is becoming history. Your story is changing. It's becoming history. And history is what? History is his story. His story. That's history. That's what I'm saying that your situation is becoming history. Your name is becoming history. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody, your past is becoming history. God is changing and writing his story in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we are in a dispensation where God does that by grace. Sometimes, again, I understand that when, we, when I preach and I start prophesying, I am not praying. I am not hoping. I am, I am even beyond faith. Eh? I know. I don't pray and prophesy hoping that your story will change. I know it is changing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because that's a dispensation that God has given us to exercise the liberties of one exercising out of hoping. Because I know, Susan, your past is becoming story, history in the name of the Lord Jesus. I know it. Glory to God. So that's the mystery. So he says, and the mystery is this. Because of Christ Jesus, the good news has given the Gentiles a share in the promises that God gave to the Jews. That's the mystery. Hallelujah. Uh, the message version says, the mystery is that people who, who have never heard of God and those who have heard of him are all, all their lives. What I've been calling outsiders and insiders stand on the same ground before God. I'm still, but I'm still prophesying. Standing on the same ground before God. He says, they get the same offer, the same help, same promises in Christ. These Gentiles, get the, they, they now stand with the Jews. They get the same offer. They get the same help. They get the same promises in Christ. And I'm prophesying in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you are going to stand among the great in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the same ground among the great. Because you are great. Amen. You have to believe it. You have to believe it. Hallelujah. Amen. The day I stood and stood and sat in the presence of my spiritual father, I knew it. Because someone had prophesied in my life, some people are going to stand among the great. And I'm just waiting for one. And I said, God, and I realized it was my spiritual father. So when I went and I to submit to him, I said, God, in three weeks, because seeing that money, I even spent one year, by the way. Guys have spent one year to just go and spend his time. And I'm not going to admit, but I'm just saying, because he's a busy man, right? So I put there, and I said, God, if you call me to submit to this man, give it to me, but in three weeks, the guy called me. Three weeks. And I knew my door of greatness as what? Oh, but I know it. Huh. Hallelujah. And the one who is great is preaching to you. Hey, you're sitting under greatness. Hallelujah. You're sitting under greatness. Hallelujah. <laughs> But it also means that the same offer, the same promises are all yours. Listen to me. That means when the Old Testament say you are above only and not beneath, you partake of that. You're the head and not the tail, you partake of that. Hallelujah. I'll, I'll give you the, the, the ability to create wealth. 
You partake by that means every promise in the Old Testament is yours by you being in Christ. That's why when you go and read the Old Testament, you read with this thing that in Christ it has been fulfilled. For the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ. So I read the Old Testament not to be saved. I, I read the, 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 the Testament to know and partake of every promise that God has given me. So when I'm reading and I read, Banangi, their heads are not just, oh, hey, I shake up, oh, Father, because it's mine. I'm now an insider. Before I was an outsider. But now in Christ, I put the good. That changes. You should go back and read the Old Testament with this eye. You'll be amazed of all the promises. They are fulfilled. Then he comes and says, Bless you are blessed with every spiritual blessing. blessing. Listen to me, I want to close. Verse 7 it says, Of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. Right? Paul is saying, Of this thing, because of this thing. I became the minister of the gift of the grace of God. I'm coming back to the assignment. So, Paul gives you the reason as to why he became a minister. Of the gift of the grace of God. Many are called, few are chosen. Were there many apostles in that generation? They were there. But Paul was the chosen one. Why? Revelation. I know the difference to be called and to be chosen. Hallelujah. So minister, be a minister beyond just being called. Be a minister as one who, is, who has come according to the grace, the gift of the grace of God. Okay, this is why we should be distinct. Don't just fit in as a minister. Stand out from the cold and be among the few in this dispensation. Amen. There are ministers that are called. And there are those that are chosen. And I'll tell you something. Harvard is chosen because we partake of this. We have our understanding in this gospel. That means every area is under this cloud and covering of a minister who is called according to the gift of the grace of God. I wasn't called. It's chosen. Assigned by revelation. That's why God opened my eyes in a dream and showed me church international. I knew it. Glory to God. So, partake of that. But it all starts with a revelation that you know of God. Are you hearing me, people? Paul says, this is my life. Helping people understand and respond to this message. That's my life. I want you to understand the mystery and respond to the mystery. That's the purpose for this gospel, Prophet 25. Understand the mystery. Christ revealed. Christ in you the hope of glory. And respond to it according to this message. That's your cardinal ministry as a minister. So I'm going to close with my understanding. Number one, quickly. As Pastor Adrian, I have my knowledge in this mystery. I know it. Okay? Because Christ is in me. Listen to my understanding. To mine. Because you just need to get yours. Hallelujah. Because Christ is in me, I don't have, I don't have to wait to go to heaven to live a glorified life. Okay? That's my, and I don't have to wait to go to heaven to live a glorified life. I live it here on earth because the glorified Christ is in me. Amen. For me to wait to go to heaven means that how about the life, the glorified life of the Christ that is in me? Because he lives in me. If it's a glorified life, he lives in me. That's my understanding. That's what God gave me and that's what he preached. I can make one statement. You don't have to wait to go to heaven to live a glorified life. That statement is powerful because I know it comes from a certain revelation. And covenant in understanding with my God. That, that means I, if I am sick, okay, I don't have to wait to be healed. Because I'm, 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 I'm telling you. You, 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 you don't have to wait to be healed to come to the altar and say, Mukama, you have to No, Pastor is saying, you don't have to wait to be healed to testify. You were already healed. Waiting to go to heaven. You were, you were broke. You got the job. 
They are paying you 10 million. And I am coming. No, no. You don't have to wait to get a job to testify. You already have it because all things are mine. Yours. So when I tell guys here, does anyone have a testimony? <laughs> now they're getting testimony. And I'm like, God, the message is getting nice on the market. Hallelujah. Guys, do you have a means for you to come here? You have no job and you stand up here? You are putting God at His word. Say, Father, guys, God, uh, praise the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. I thank God that He has blessed me with a job. Glory to God. You are putting God to the test. That is faith in action. Why are you waiting? And tell me as you say, bro, yet God has given your pastor a revelation that unlocks that. I thank God for my wedding. I am married. This is where our husband is going. They want to call you stupid. They want to call you foolish. But as you do that, it will work. I'm prophesying by now. It will work. Don't wait to get a job. Don't wait to get a child. Don't wait to see that healing. You already have it. That's my knowledge in the mystery. So I live in present truth. I am healed. I am married. I am well. I am blessed. I live in the present truth. I change the language. Once God opens and sees your vision, it keeps your language. Some of you don't have the language because you don't see it in the spirit. When I'm praying, when I'm praying, I pray because I have the language for it. I saw this thing. I have the language for it. I pray. I saw, I saw myself in China National. I pray according to the language. I can't have the language until I see. I have to see. Then it will give me the language. Some of you are saying you're sick because you don't see. Have a vision and you have a language for it. If you're really above, that's your language. Say it first. A footless bus. Am I talking and communicating? Yeah. Change, change your language. Pray for God to open your eyes and you'll see the language. When you get a language, you love prayer. You look forward to pray. Zekatale Robake. And he gives you the language. Some of you are comfortable with four people in church. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's my knowledge in the mystery. Ephesians 2.20, the message version says, he used the same apostles and prophets for the foundation. Now he's using you. He says, fitting you brick by brick, stone by stone, which Christ Jesus has the cornerstone. God is now using you. He laid the foundation with the apostles. But the apostles are long gone. But now he's using Sharon. But Sharon must get her part in the understanding of the knowledge of the mystery. Pastor Aaron has told you his understanding. By the way, by that, let me tell you something. The anointing upon my life and the grace of God upon my life with this revelation means that in your life you don't have to wait to get married for you to say I'm married. You, do, you, you, you don't have to wait to get married. I mean to, to get money. Just operate this anointing. Hallelujah. And say and start praying like that. Let me tell you something. You come, you come here and do a second testimony. I don't, I don't know why you guys are still... Okay, they're not here. <laughs> I, I don't know why those boys of me are still broke. I don't know why they say they are sick. Because I've told us, God has given me the knowledge in the mystery that you don't have to wait to go to heaven. Okay? So you are signed according to your revelation. Hallelujah. So somebody be available to be used as a minister according to the grace of God. Don't run before you are sent. Look for that someone. It's there and go back and listen to it. Okay? But when God sends you, when God assigns you, he will draw men to you. When God sends you for that business, he will draw men to you. When God sends you, he will send you. Jesus says, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. Hallelujah. If you're assigned, God drew Gentiles to Paul because he assigned them Paul. That everyone who is to partake of this anointing, are you hearing? This one that God has given me, everyone is going to be drawn to me. Some are going to hear and they say, we want this voice. I'm telling you, we want this voice. That's how just it is. Hallelujah. So he became a minister. That's the process. It was revealed 
then he became. Revelation precedes assignment. Before you are assigned, get revelation. It may take you one week. It may take you one year. It is okay. It took Paul 13 years. Hey, Hallelujah. It took Paul how many years? 13. So I know Pastor Aaron is going to be assigned to the field according to the revelation, but I'm growing in revelation. So the mystery has been revealed. My question for us today, what is your knowledge of God in the mystery? Let's bow ahead for a moment.